Hello everyone, I'm Trey, here to share some tips and tricks to use when playing Hard Space Shipbreaker, our industrial sci-fi zero-g spaceship salvaging game. In this video, we have 10 important tips and tricks for all you cutters out there to help you keep your credits high and your death counts low. Number one, learn the grapple. The grapple tool is vital for moving heavy and dangerous objects that are floating in space. The pull function can bring light objects towards you or bring yourself towards objects that are far heavier than you are. Careful though, if you pull too fast, bad things can happen. Also, when you're trying to pull fragile components out of tight spaces, you can rotate grappled objects by rotating yourself. Number two, practice the cutter. Remember the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Because in Shipbreaker, sometimes you only get one shot. The powerful split saw head mount for your cutting tool can quickly slice through large walls with its searing hot laser. But it can also damage valuable components and accidentally sever fuel lines hidden behind those walls. Your split saw can make both horizontal and vertical cuts. And you always have the option to switch to the stinger head mount when you're looking for more precision. Number three, use your hands. Your hands are vital tools when navigating zero-g environments. Your magnetic gloves can be used to grab and hold on to metal objects and walls. Use them to stabilize your aim or cushion yourself from high velocity impacts. Hands can also be used to carefully move and manipulate objects around in the environment and come in handy when you're trying not to get sucked out of an airlock. Number four, tethers. Tethers are an advanced upgrade feature for your grapple tool that pulls objects together once they're activated. Larger objects will pull smaller objects towards them, while tethered objects of similar mass will pull themselves together. Using multiple tethers increases the strength of the pull. So if you stack enough tethers together, all pulling in the same direction, you can move almost anything. Refilling your tethers does cost precious credits though, so use them wisely, especially early in the campaign. Number five, atmospheric regulation. You will encounter some areas in ships that are still pressurized, and exposing them to a vacuum leads to a decompression event. The escaping oxygen hurls all loose objects towards the breach and often results in an explosive chain reaction. The safest way to depressurize a room is to find an atmosphere regulator and shut it off. If that's not an option, try to find a safe spot to decompress the room yourself. If you're feeling creative, sometimes you can even use decompression events to your advantage. Number six, power and electricity. A ship's power is controlled by a power cell or a generator, depending on the class of ship. Always take this into account when salvaging because once you remove a ship's power source, many of its systems will begin to malfunction or shut down completely. Be careful when removing power sources. Like reactors, power sources become unstable as soon as they're removed from their casing and can damage nearby objects and overcharge any electronic equipment they come in contact with. Number seven, fuel and fire. Fuel pipes are safe to cut if you find a way to remove the fuel inside first. If you find the correct valve, you can expel the fuel manually. Or if you can't, there's always the option to perform some controlled demolitions to flush it out yourself. Use caution when making your cuts near ruptured fuel lines. Fuel leaks often create deadly gas clouds that can easily be ignited. Number eight. Be cool. Coolant pipes and tanks can flash freeze walls and break fragile objects. Frozen surfaces can easily be shattered with enough force, making coolant tanks a great way to make large holes without the risk of setting everything on fire. In a pinch, seasoned cutters have also been known to use coolant sprays to extinguish fires. Number nine, picking the right ship. There are multiple ship classes with varying roles, all with different shapes, sizes, and configurations. The right ship can net you a bigger bonus if you know what you're looking for. If you require furniture to complete your next certification, small transport ships usually have a good number of passenger seats that you can salvage. If you're hunting for metal, however, large industrial cargo ships might be your best bet. Number 10, certifications and loadouts. Completing work orders is the best way to increase your certification level. 
which gives you access to new ship types as well as new tools and upgrades. While it's always a good idea to salvage the entire ship to maximize your credit return, even if it takes multiple shifts to do so, there may be times when you only need an object or two to complete your next certification and unlock that new upgrade you've been waiting for. You always have the option to get what you need from a ship and then end your shift early to purchase your upgrades right away. But be careful, Lynx doesn't like it when you waste precious resources and will likely dock your pay to discourage this type of behavior in the future. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. And if you'd like to find out more about Hardspace Shipbreaker, you can join our community on our official Discord channel. Until next time, stay safe out there, Cutters.